I am uh, looking around for various investments, and one of the investments that has you know been been good for us in the past has been real estate, uh, buying rental properties and such. And uh, one of my biggest concerns is rent control, uh, because that would you know, has the potential to uh, just completely be a horrible investment if the area in which you buy. Uh, if rent control comes about, oh my gosh, that's just, it's a tragedy. If you think there's any chance that it'll come about, you can't, you know, invest in that area. So anyway, I uh, looked up um, on a popular video uh, site, I looked up rent control, and I saw a bunch of thumbnails of videos that said uh, housing is a right, is a or housing is a human right, or a basic human right. And this made me think about the topic of this little chat, which is you should know a little something about something before you have a strong opinion. Like before you write something on a sign and go march in the streets, you should know a little bit about your side of the issue, the opposite side of the issue, the words that you write on the sign, the philosophy uh, of the topic, the the economics, the macroeconomics of the topic. If you don't know these things, then you're kind of an idiot. You're kind of a moron if you go out and proclaim to be the 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 person who knows about it and who wants others to say, "Oh, wow, this person really believes strongly in this. They must have looked into it and must have answers." Um, so let's just take this housing is a right or is a basic human right uh, claim that's on a sign. Uh, so I guess the first question would be, uh, when you say housing, do you mean a shelter that will keep you safe from the elements and will keep you between, I don't know, 60 degrees and 70 degrees or whatever the time of year and I guess if you're in a 120 degree desert, it would be keeping you cool. If it's in a frigid tundra, it would be keeping you warm. Um, is that what you mean by housing? Or do you mean a per, uh, certain per square footage per human being uh, that lives in that house? Should Is this right of yours to have housing? Is that to live alone? Uh, and if so, how many square feet do you deserve? Um, what amenities do you deserve? Or is it just the house? Uh, would you also, do you deserve to have electricity in the house? Do you deserve a swimming pool in the backyard? Uh, do you deserve to have cold water flowing into the house? Do you deserve to have hot water flowing? What is it exactly that you deserve? Uh, would it be adequate, this human right of yours to have housing, would it be adequate if it was essentially phone booths turned on their side and, you know, maybe let's make them a little bit bigger, maybe four feet by four feet, uh, these horizontal cubes. And would you be happy to live in a building that had a thousand of these cubes? So a thousand people would have a place to sleep. And then every 20 of them shared one bathroom and you get a, a schedule. There's a shower in the, the building and once a week you get to shower. Or are your human rights... Do you have a right to more than that? Does it depend on where you live? If you live in India or Hawaii or Beverly Hills, do you have a right to live right there in that place that has the climate that you prefer or that you're familiar with, that has the, uh, the beauty around it that you deserve? Um, where is it that you have a right to have this house? So... Until you have really worked through those things, I would say you shouldn't go out and hold signs or, or have an opinion that you're more than agnostic about. Like, you need to really dig into it. And something that, the, the second thing, which is probably even way bigger, would be, you're talking about rights. Do you consider the right to housing do you think that that is a positive right or a negative right? And if you're thinking right now, well, I'm not sure of the difference of those two things, then I suggest 
you need to hold off on talking about rights until you check that out and follow a few rabbit holes in whatever directions you're interested and learn a bit more. So I'll give you the answer to that if you don't already know it. A positive right is a, a, a supposed right to something that requires someone else to do something. A negative right is a supposed right to something that uh, prohibits others from doing a thing. So in the, the quick and easy example would be uh, a punch or a hug. Um, I, if I say I have a right not to be punched, then that places a duty on other people not to do a certain thing to me, which is punching me. If I say I have a right to be hugged, then that places the duty on other people who might or might not want to hug me to give me a hug. So the hugging would be a positive right. The absence of being punched would be a negative right. So if we if we use that negative or positive right, what is this, this uh, uh, housing right that you're alleging? It, do you think that's a negative or a positive right? Well, it's clearly a positive right because it requires other people to provide you with whatever level of lodging that, according to your line of thinking, you have a right to. Whether it's uh, 3,000 square feet and you get to live alone and it needs uh, to have an ocean view, or if you think that the 4 by 4 foot horizontal sleeping cubicle would meet that basic human right that you, that you think you have. So who is going to supply this? Like, these are things that I hope you've thought through. Uh, who is it that is going to supply this housing for you? And how are they going to do that? Is it going to be, are, are you saying that you think you have a right to this thing? And hey, you're putting it out there on GoFundMe uh, type platform. And you're saying, hey, those of you who are, who agree with me that I have a right to housing, please chip in because you and I both agree that's kind of, I have a right to it. Well, why should a particular person chip in? Uh, what if they think that they have a right to housing that is a 10,000 square foot, really nice house with a beachfront view in Southern California, and in order to get that house, it's going to cost $15 million, and they only have $8 million net worth, why is it that they should put effort into your housing right of a four foot by four foot horizontal cubicle rather than their right to the big, huge mansion? Like, these are questions that until you have figured these out in your own head, you really shouldn't be stepping onto the, the public square and shouting your opinion. Like, have something to back up your opinion. Now, if you've thought this stuff through and you have answers to the, the few things that I've asked, you know, like define exactly what housing is that, you know, what kind of housing you have a right to. Um, and there, there are a lot of questions I haven't even asked. But even if you just had that foundation of the two questions that I asked, which is what kind of a right is it? And who is it that, you know, since it's a positive right, whose obligation is it to fulfill it? I haven't even gotten into why is it morally okay for you to tell somebody else that you have a right to a, a particular type of housing and they have to pay for it? Wouldn't that be like somebody saying, hey, we all have a right to to love. We have the right to hold someone close to us and make love to them. If you have that right, that places a positive obligation on somebody else. And isn't that kind of what rape is? If it's not voluntary... Now, if it's a GoFundMe kind of thing, hey, I'm lonely and I need somebody to make love to. Can I have any any uh, anybody out there willing to donate their time and, and well, I guess other things to me? Um, oh, that's perfectly acceptable. But if you're saying I have a right to this and you right over there, you're the one who has to provide this to me because you're obviously a very luscious and sexy person. And so because you have all of that to offer, I deserve it. And you over there are obviously wealthy. You, you've accumulated a lot of money. So you're the one who has to provide me with a house. 
if you think you have rights to things, to positive rights to things, then wouldn't it really make sense for you to think who it is that you think you can demand this of? And it doesn't have to be directly. Like, it, it would make sense that you would say, well, I don't want to go to that particular rich guy because his security guards that are trying to keep him and his property safe, they're not going to let me take money from him for a house or, or bug him by demanding it. So to make it easier for me, I'll join with a bunch of other people and we'll find a middleman who we call government and we'll have them go steal the money from, from the rich guy. Think this through. Does that, does that sound like a moral choice? I, I would argue that it doesn't. I, I would, I'd actually argue that there, there are no actual real positive rights. I don't think such a thing exists. I don't even think negative rights exist. I think we all just kind of are where we are. It is what it is. And I don't know if it's sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You don't have a right to see sunshine every day. If you really enjoy seeing it, then yeah, you probably want to live certain places rather than certain other places, but you don't have a right to that. You don't have a right to housing. You don't have a right not to be punched. Gosh, I sure have a strong preference not to be punched. And I try to conduct my life in a, in a way that I don't get punched. I, I choose where I live. I choose where I go. I choose what I say. Uh, you know, if it's really important to me not to get punched, uh, I'm a, you know, over 98% Anglo dude, uh, very white with, with you know, old, I used to have red hair before it turned gray. Um, it would not make sense for me to go to the bad part of town and then pick in that bad part of town, pick a bar that is frequented by people, uh, let's say black people, no, people of color, because black is bad, I guess, so I shouldn't say that word, but people of color, and then go in there and tell racist, anti-people of color jokes in front of a bunch of drunk people. Um, like, that would be a, a, a way that I would get punched. So if I don't want to, then I should probably, it would be smart, to take actions that would reduce my probability of getting punched. But it's not a right not to get punched. It's not a right to punch. These things rights, I don't think they exist. Now I'm not a I'm not a, a intellectual philosopher. Well, I guess I'm intellectual and I am a philosopher. So I'll take that back. I am an intellectual philosopher, and if you're listening to this, you are too, but I'm not a, a professional incredibly well-read academic philosopher. So I can't really prove everything I'm saying, but I'd ask you to ponder it and try to at least satisfy yourself one way or the other. And if you satisfy yourself that the things I've said in this, this segment are incorrect, if there are parts that you go, oh, got it wrong there, Shepard. At that four minute, 38 second mark, uh, that statement you made is absolutely wrong. And I know why. Well, golly, please correct me. Please write a comment and say, hey, at that point, this is what you said, and that ain't right. This is what's right. This is why it's right. I mean, do a little bit of work. Do a little bit of intellectual thinking and argue with stuff. I want to be, I want the truth. And if I'm saying things that aren't true or you have something that's even truer, my gosh, I want to know that. That's what I want to think from now on. So please do me the honor and, and have the, the intellectual bravery or curiosity or, or guts or whatever to uh, yeah put a little effort into it before you form an opinion. And once you form that opinion, if it has a good solid foundation, tell people about it. Prove it. 